For decades, we've been powering our appliances in our homes with coal, natural gas, solar, wind, and even diesel like this power plant behind us. But there's something else keeping the lights on, batteries. That brings us to this. Tesla and Kauai partnered to build a 13 megawatt solar farm. Now it fills about 45 acres. Now all that solar energy, it's going to fill these. These are Tesla power packs. It's 52 megawatt hours of energy that Kauai would be able to use to power its houses at night. The entire state of Hawaii has committed to a 100% renewable future for electricity generation. Kauai is leading the pack. We live on an island, we live in paradise. This is one of the most beautiful places on the planet. During the daylight hours, prime sunlight hours, with all the solar that's going on, we're hitting 97, as high as 99% renewable penetration. So we realize that we can't keep adding more solar because it's just going to be creating curtailment and that's going to really hurt the economics. Because electricity demand tends to be very smooth throughout the day, but uh, renewable energy production depends upon the availability of the solar resource or the wind resource, which can be extremely intermittent uh, throughout the day. That's going to have to be met with storage. And so the challenge is not generating energy, because we can do that. The challenge is being able to capture that energy and then really being able to deliver it when the consumer needs it. And this project does that. We're here at the, the Tesla uh, solar facility, coupled with uh, energy storage here in the island of Kauai, in Hawaii. And uh, this is uh, one of the world's first facilities where we're directly integrating solar with storage at the same site. What is really exciting about this project is that it's dispatchable solar. So we are uh, charging the batteries during the day and, and uh, storing the energy. And then we will be able to use it uh, throughout the day whenever it's needed. So that we can provide that solar energy back to the customers and back to the grid um, with firm guaranteed reliability uh, around the clock. Actually, even after the sun goes down, we can still keep providing the energy that was stored during the day from the batteries. You got a low cost uh, fuel source, really, the sun and the panels, and declining cost of batteries. It's a great opportunity for us out here in high cost areas to uh, bring in renewables, avoid oil, and uh, help everybody on the island. Storage, to the extent that you're going to have these very aggressive renewable energy goals like California has, California has uh, essentially a 33% renewable portfolio standard by 2020 and a 50% by 2030. California also has a storage mandate, which is mandating the three investor-owned utilities in the state have at least 1,300 megawatts of storage capacity which I think is a, certainly a start, but to find out you know, greater amounts of storage, uh, that really is gonna depend on the economics. Hawaii was the most dependent state in the country on imported fossil fuels. Even as recent as five years back, we were still over 90% reliant on imported fossil fuel for our electricity generation. At the highest rate here, back when oil was pushing $150 a barrel, we were almost at 50 cents a kilowatt hour. We want to do things cheaper than have oil, and we don't want to be subject to the fluctuations from the petroleum market. We made that commitment that we want a different future. We want to be isolated from foreign fuel markets prices and we wanted to uh, create jobs here. Well, the big movement on Kauai's energy grid was in 2002 when the cooperative was formed here. It's one of the newest co-ops in the country. It's owned by the people. So the consumer controls the company. So the community not only embraces the commitment to 100% clean a renewable future, but uh, it is the shareholders that are part of that equation. Every day you drive by and you see this as an example of clean renewable energy, you know, the sustainability, community involvement and engagement, and I, I see it as something quite beautiful. Energy storage is a, is a transformational technology for the grid. It, it's one of the, the most interesting, I think, advances for the grid in, in 100 years. To me, what's fascinating is the electric pricing for a residential customer is hanging somewhere around $200 a month for the average member. And we're holding steady, dropping, but I think a lot of other kind of utility-based costs like cable TV, internet, phones, 
all those costs are going up, where is electricity is becoming less and less a factor here on Kauai than it used to be. It's not their number one bill anymore. Some of the, they may be paying more for cellular coverage than they are for electricity, and it's an awful nice uh, service they get relative to just having a cell phone. Without storage, you, you can only have so much because you need to have instantaneous matching between the loads and the generation. But with storage, we can break that and we can suddenly have you know, things like solar panels that can provide ultimately maybe all of the electricity that the grid needs. And it allows the, the whole grid to operate much more efficiently, uh, much more economically. You, know, you don't have to have oversized you know, generators and oversized wires everywhere to deal with the peak demands that only happen a brief period of the time. A lot of utilities, I think, are realizing the importance of, of this technology, and whether it's storage plus solar or both. You know, I think every utility around the, the, the world is, is realizing this is going to impact their business model and wants to learn a lot about it. One of the big question marks in all of this scaling renewables is you know, suppose we have a one week long period where it's cloudy every day, we don't get any storage, what happens? How long can we last with the storage? And I think that's where Hawaii can teach the you know, rest of the world as well as the, the United States is, you know, what kind of storage do we need to be able to make it through these periods where we're not getting any renewable energy? Uh, you know, how much storage do we need for redundancy? What other mitigating measures can people take? Now, island grid uh, subject to lengthy uh, rain or, or storm events, we're, never, we're probably never going to uh, decommission our plants because we want them there for emergencies or yeah. we, we had a period 10 or 12 years ago where it rained for 40 days and 40 nights here <laughs> and the biblical rain and we're, I, I don't see that we're ever going to have enough battery storage to cover a very long yeah. period like that. So you got to have conventional mm -hmm. generation as backup. Really, it makes very little sense to invest in storage unless you are really serious about renewables and scaling up renewables. We need to build a lot of products. We need to ramp up our ability to, to build more battery packs. And uh, we're doing that very quickly. But you know, today, that still is, is our limitation, is how many we can actually build. We already have a way to store energy in a regime where we're not interested in, uh, in only using renewable resources, it's called don't burn the fossil fuel. The important thing to remember about storage, even if it's the energy is coming from a renewable unit, is that it's the reverse of a battery charger, is that when you're charging uh, you know, something in order to put that into the battery, some of the energy that you're trying to put in the battery is lost through heat. That means that you're getting less than the total amount of energy that you attempted to put in into that battery. So whereas in the case of you know, storing the energy as fossil fuel, you're just not burning the energy, so there's no real waste of the energy in heat. It's, it's just not being burned. Um, there's a lot of customer interest and a lot of different uh, you know, demand coming from all, all around the world. We're trying to scale up as fast as we can to meet all that, but, but right now that still is a challenge. Prince Kohio, who got the legislation for our Hawaiian Homes Commission Act uh, passed in the 20s, his intention was to have these lands rehabilitate our people. I think this Anahola solar farm, what it means to our community is hope and belief. If we just you know, showed people these prices, we would probably be able to uh, get people to, on their own, invest in these storage uh, devices, lower their annual electricity bills. That is what's going to get them to find it in their interest to make the, the sorts of decisions that are going to make the grid operate uh, more efficiently. We've already seen uh, many folks come around, you know, and develop that sense of belief and seeing that it is something um, positive and that it is definitely something that is good for our community, homesteaders, good for the island, good for the planet. I mean, there's there's so much good about this. Surprisingly, storage has been, um, it has not had very many regulatory hurdles. I think it, it often solves regulatory problems, you know, where solar alone or wind alone, you know, may often, you know, be a bit more controversial because it puts a burden on the grid. Um, storage solves a lot of those problems. Everyone talks about the housing and the farming, but there's more than that. There's also mercantile and community economic development. So this project, it represents to me the hope and belief in us doing exactly that. This can be an example of what more we can do as a community in community economic development.